Well, hey everybody. Whoops. Welcome to a, another Not Thursday in New Hampshire. A rainy day. But we're going to end this week out with something I've been wanting to do. And here's just a brief glimpse of some things. And a brief glimpse of this crazy book that I bought that's going to provide us with some entertainment. So what we're going to do is we are going to go through the all the stuff that I dug at the site across from the river. If you came into this uh, video not seeing the other episodes, this is in a playlist. Go look for the playlist or it'll be at the end of this video. Anyways, I had spent the last, oh, I don't know, month and a half every now and then going down detecting 10, 11 times uh, on the other side of the river where the mills were. And it's apparent that people were living there, although there was no cellar hole, but there were signs of a definite structure or two, and we dug lots of stuff. And it's all post-Civil War, mostly late 1800s. So this should be interesting. And for reference, I bought this book months ago. It's amazing, 1897 Sears and Roebuck catalog. And it is absolutely loaded with things from the past which help us do the hobby uh, of metal detecting. And it's going to provide us with some interesting, you know, references as in what things cost or what the name is or whatever the case. This is going to be fun. So let's get right down to start laying out all the things that I have dug from that site. So what we are going to start with is spoons. Lots of spoons. Now, what I did was I looked up, seeing that this book is 1897, what the average pay in New Hampshire was, you know, 1880s, 1890s. And it said a carpenter could make as much as 32 cents an hour or roughly $20 a week. And a basic laborer was half that. So call it 15 cents, 10 bucks a week. And it's interesting when you look at the prices of certain things in the book for that time period. And... Uh, you know, you think about what things cost for these people. And right there, tea and tablespoons, we'll just call it that. Uh, on an average of seven cents, and then they had different sizes, you know, four, five, six, seven cents. Which doesn't sound like a lot of money, but, you know, if you're a laborer, that is basically, you know, if you want a spoon, that's a half an hour's worth of work to get you something you absolutely need. And now this piece right here, I was convinced it was a spoon handle when I dug it out of the ground, but the front end of it is not broken, if you can see that. It is a weird piece. It looks like a spoon handle, but it is completely perfect on all edges, and I have no idea. But other than that, quite a few spoon finds and this thing that looks like a spoon. And then we found the hammerhead. And keep in mind, with each item you see here, I probably dug five or six pieces of trash for each item. And there's a lot of stuff here. I'm just going through the, no particular order, a, a shear. So, you know, a pair of them to cut. My surface find insulator. Love that. This is another one of my favorites out of that site. So it's a chunk of sheet metal, right? With a draw pull knob. But when you look closely, that is an iron escutcheon. And it's all leaf, leaves, all the way around. It's the only one I've ever found like this. Uh, generally, when you find a draw pull, you don't find the escutcheon connected to it. Never mind, you know, whatever else this was attached to. And I'm just... You know, I'm not going to go crazy with time-wise on every item because there's no need for that. Or prices. The book is just to show you 
If you can find one, get one. I will put a link down below to where you can get one. Totally worth it. There is our one piece of crotal bell. This is a lid, which was the only thing I went out and found that one day I went out and dug there. And now we're gonna get into the watch pieces. That is a definite watch back. That is potentially, could be a compact. That's a watch face, not sure of that. And the absolutely necessary watch winder. Now when it comes to watches, it is a mixed variety, just like it is today with prices and you know qualities, builds, gold, silver. They state they were almost given away. Uh, I guess these are your low-end ones, and yeah, you could get one for about a buck. So, somewhat affordable. Kind of hard to identify what I have had uh, with those pieces. But then there were all kinds that were engraved. And, uh, yeah, 18 bucks. So you could have bought a pocket watch for about a week's worth of pay back in those days. 275 so all kinds of different prices and you know hard to say what that's so obviously they're not silver nor gold and then a beautiful rain guide a beautiful other type of guide of some sort i don't know if this was a latch or a hook coat hat hook or something there's leather still on it which is definitely interesting the classic measuring stick corner joint, just like this. So, that is a classic and great find. You can imagine how handy that was back then. Still handy today. Speaking of handy, one thimble. One thing, it's uh, brass. It's swiveled. That is a nail or iron spike. No idea, but I really like it. A pewter top to a pepper shaker. Very brittle, barely holding together. Two of these things. Okay, so going through the book real quick, your pad hooks and turrets. So there's what our you know standard rain guide looks like, and that's similar to the one I have with the leather. And uh, Belt hooks for buggy harness, 75 cents. So they were actually quite expensive. And as I'm looking at this, I just want to show you guys something. These things, which we call cheese slicers, jokingly, they're called cockies. That's what that thing is. But what I was looking for was uh, suspenders. The book is insane. There's like 40,000 things in here. Let me show you the suspenders we found, even though I can't find them in the book. I'll find it after I'm done with this. But we have quite the variety here. And this one is awesome. Look at that thing. So we ended up with five different types of suspenders from just there. And I thought this was really cool as I was cleaning it. So yeah, we have a hinge. There's a fair amount of wood still left in there, which to me is uh, rather amazing. When you really think of how old that is. I've been sitting in the ground. And then this thing, which I wasn't sure of what it was, but I saw some comments and the guru confirmed that in one of those mill sites, because there was a bunch of them on that river, uh, at some point in time, they were making ski supplies, whether they were actual skis, ski bowls. So that, uh, in context, nails it for the history of that area we are working. All right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here, literally. So here we go with what's left of a pocket knife. Checking with the book, you could spend anywhere from, say, 25 cents to 75 cents for a basic folder. Our incidental pipe. One piece of 
china. Itty bitty of a harmonica reed corset. The two random valve cap covers from the 1900s. And then we have a whole bunch of bits and pieces that are just don't knows. Actually, that's a brass staple tack for leather. There's just a whole bunch of things here that were parts of other things when they were once larger and complete. We'll put all that here. And then the two cream of the crop finds the Grand Army Republic Civil War veteran medallion, or at least the top half. Still want to find that star that hung below the flag of this. And this ladies locket type jewelry thing, which is a piece of beautifulness. And I did find some similar things in the book, which you can see they made all types of, uh, well, these are rolled gold plated and gold filled Victoria chains, but you can see how they have that kind of fob style and then with all kinds of things decoratively hanging from. I didn't find a match, but then again, this book is 1897 and that piece could predate. This just gets us in the ballpark for a lot of these items. So there we go. That is the stuff that I dug at that site. Amazingly with no cellar hole, just a couple walls, a river, and some shifted land. And I'm sure there's more there. I just need to wait for it to, the vegetation to dry uh, die off so I can get into those tough areas. And again, if none of you have seen this book, you have to own one because it's mind blowing. I don't want to open it because Jen's got all kinds of things paged, marked, and so she can get back and find them. Uh, I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. If I can find it, I'll put the link down below. I think it cost me... You know what it cost me? It cost me about a week and a half's wages in 1885. So, that's it. Thanks for checking in with me and going over all this stuff. We may get back out there a little bit more before the season ends. If not, we'll hit it again next spring. All right, everybody. See you soon. Till next time. Hey, Lou. Enjoy your not Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>